Hello and welcome to Getting Candid with me, your girl Helen. Am I excited that we're finally back, 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 back with new episodes? I hope you guys have been waiting and crossing fingers, but of, of course we gave you a, 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 an episode recently and the feedback was really good. Thank you so much. Keep subscribing to the channel, but I am sure you should be very excited about the episode that we have today. I'm chatting with Dumi Sunny. Linga Malinga Tube. Guys, I struggle to pronounce this name, but I'm talking to the radical entrepreneur, Mr. Dumisani, and uh, we'll be having a chat. And we also got to go to his school, primary school at the farms. You guys stay tuned and just get to enjoy this conversation. Welcome back. So I mentioned in the opening that I'll be chatting with one of the most successful young entrepreneurs that we have in Zambia. Now, here comes the hard part, it's the name. Dumisani, linga malinga, linga malinga. <laughs> you have to help me there. Ling, hey man. Linga mangali. Linga mangali. Yeah, linga mangali. Nguwe. How is it? Nguwe. Nguwe. Yeah, nguwe. Nguwe, nguwe. I'll, I'll catch up. Better with a sweet in your mouth. It oh, really? It's very easy. So just saying, nguwe, nguwe. <laughs> I don't know why people find it so difficult. It's, so, it's linga hard. mangali, nguwe. Linga mangali, nguwe. Yo, man. Good try. I, I think I'll, I'll practice with a sweet, like you've said. <laughs> what does uh, linga mangali mean? Oh, linga mangali means don't be surprised. What language is that? That's Ndebele. Ndebele? Ndebele. Okay, yeah. nice. Yeah. It's, I'll catch on. By the end of this interview, I should catch on with your name. You have no choice, actually. I have no choice, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for welcoming us here. The pleasure is mine. Glad that you're here. Thank you. Yeah. You're good? Great. Yeah. Great. 2023 20, is setting, setting in well. And we're in the, yeah, I think all is going on well. And we are glad that you are settling in well. And yeah, the journey continues. Nice. Yeah. So there is so much to talk about. I was talking about uh, in the opening, talking about how you, I feel, I feel like for a young person, you've done so much. Oh. In our country, we don't see that a lot. In other countries, maybe it's normal. But here, if somebody's going to make it big around 20 something, it's, it's a shock. And from nowhere, for me, at least I was like, who is this person? Where did he come from? I would like to know uh, the radical entrepreneur. Where did that come from? Uh, so I'm commonly called the radical entrepreneur because my approach to entrepreneurship is uh, quite radical. My approach is radical. Uh, so the birth of my enterprising journey um, is from you know secondary school, you know selling pamphlets. Uh, from pamphlets, got to the village, opened a kiosk, a simple contemba. From a simple contemba, got on to trading in goods, you know, buying goods from deeper villages, okay. selling. Um, then when I was 16, you know, turning 17, I began importing things from Botswana, mm -hmm. uh, then later on South Africa. Um, yeah, I think that has been my journey. So the time I was 20 years old, founded uh, a software company with two other friends uh, called Glad Tidings Software Limited. And we have a product called Glad Tidings eSchool. I think that is the first uh, company that I have ever owned, um, uh, co-owned actually with two other friends. Um, that is the company that helped me have a breakthrough. So it is from that company where we had a product called Glad Tidings eSchool. So, so this is a school management system that would help schools with timetabling, accounting, uh, grade book management, you know, report cards and whatnot. So it would automatically do all that stuff. Um, and it might interest you to note that up to date, that is the most used school management system in Zambia. Serious? Yes, yeah, so that was founded when I was 20. So that is what gave me the breakthrough um, into mainstream entrepreneurship. Uh, and it is from that package that then I was seen as a successful guy. So then I decided then to invest in transport, you know, you know, buying uh, trucks. So the first truck I bought was a Mercedes-Benz Atego, then from then on moved on to Volvo FS12. Now these, these are what you call truck and trailers. Mm -hmm. um, and of course people couldn't believe then that a young person could own such. So I think all these little pieces built up to what you know as the, right the radical right. entrepreneur today. No, I'm just thinking, you're, as you're talking right now, I'm thinking, oh, your journey was smooth. Firstly, to start with, you start with pamphlets at school. 
uh, what brought up that idea? Because I mean, at school, we're just thinking, because uh, that, that was high school, right? Yes, high school. Guys are learning, girls, they are like, oh, to my girl, the others are thinking, let me, let me be the coolest guy in school, let me try some weed, let me try some alcohol. Do you think I need to, to, to sell some pamphlets and make some money? How did that idea come up? All right. I'm not so sure if I really, really wanted to be an entrepreneur because mm -hmm. uh, I doubt if that was the kind of conversation that we used to have as young ones, you know. As young ones, the conversations revolved around, you know, being a doctor, a you know, being a pilot, <laughs> yeah. uh, being an accountant, engineer and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I think I was one of those that also thought that way. Uh, but the entrepreneurship aspect came in, you know, when I got to my terrible boss now. Here's, here's something very interesting. I come from a very poor background, you know, very humble, you know, born in a thatched house, you know, no electricity. Um, uh, so that is the background that I come from. So my primary school uh, is done at, um, so I was done at a local school where we, we are learning in Nyanja, you know, Nyanja is a local language for those that may not know, yeah. where we are learning in Nyanja. Actually, English itself, we are learning it in Nyanja. So they would say, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You can teach yeah. English in Nyanja and say, "Apa mwamba ndiye pa top of the table, apa manje ndiye pa under." You know, so so I come from that background. But yeah. the but the interesting thing is that um, my performance was pretty good mm -hmm. uh, at primary school. I actually skipped grade six and got straight into grade seven. And despite getting into the new grade, I was mm -hmm. the highest in the new grade and I was the highest in the final exams wow. in grade seven uh, at my school and in the district. So I got to a mission school called Matero Boys. Now Matero Boys um, is a very interesting school. The cutoff point then was high. I don't know about now, but then it was very high. Then the fees were reasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is one of the few schools where you'd find the rich and the poor. Oh, yeah. And it might interest you to note that actually I discovered, it was a discovery, that we were poor when I got at Matero Boys. Before that you were just okay. Because it was okay. the norm for everyone, right? It, it was right? normal. It was normal. Yeah. Everyone is in first houses. Everyone is living a similar life. Yeah. So, so it was normal. It was only when I got to my Toro Boys that I discovered, in fact, they are, uh, we had a couple of friends. So one was the son to the um, Commissioner General for Zambia Revenue Authority. Okay. Uh, one was the son to the Brigadier General. And those were classmates. So these are guys, amongst many others, who were doing so well. So it is only then that I discovered that, hmm, we are poor. So from that point, it was then a decision that I made to say it would be nice to have a comfortable life. Mm -hmm. So it is what I did then to attain that comfortable life that brought about the entrepreneurship in me. As an example, uh, at break time, because at Matero Boys would then report at eight hours, you know, like in the morning, mm -hmm. seven, seven, eight, and then would knock off in the afternoon around 16. So we had break time and lunch time. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had guys that would eat so well at break time then eat so well, even better at, at lunchtime. Lunch. Now for us, it's a huge struggle. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it was a very interesting journey. But the interesting thing was that I was very good in a subject called uh, technical drawing, TD. TD, yeah. So the first money that I made was by helping some of my colleagues do their work in technical drawing. Then they would pay me. So when they paid me, it was enough uh, for us to meet at the tax shop at break time. So I was like, okay, fine, I can make some money. Yeah. Uh, then from that, somewhere we were interested in the materials I was utilizing. So there was a geograph pamphlet. Then I said, well, I can photocopy this for you, but pay me, I'll, I'll deliver the following day. Mm. And then I'll then go to city market, make copies, then deliver. And for me then it was just to make some little profit so that we can have break time, you know. Uh, and lunch. Yes, and lunch. Uh, good time at break time and at lunch time. So it was solely for that. But after making a bit of profit, I was like, no, this thing is nice. I think it would be nice to do this again and again. Mm -hmm. And that is what has translated into me being who I have then gotten to be as an entrepreneur. Wow. 
You know, as you were saying, I think it was just like the, the universe was directing you where you're supposed to go. But what were, before that, what were you thinking of becoming maybe a lawyer? Oh, I was thinking, no, no, I was thinking of being an engineer. Okay. I was thinking of being an engineer. Uh, that, that was my dream. So how this dream came about was um, the same course, the same subject, technical drawing. I was so good at it, you know, lines, I don't know if you know that subject. Yes, yes, I know, know it. Lines I know. and drawings yes. and yeah. So naturally, people who are good at that, they tend to think of being engineers. So it was my dream to be an engineer. Uh, actually, precisely, I wanted to be a civil engineer. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I never got to be one. I never got to be one. I ended up being an accountant. Okay. So at some point, when we did run a construction business, I used to feel so nice employing civil engineers. So it's like. Whenever I am interviewing, yes. they are seated on the other side and I'm this side. In my head, I'd be like, you know, I wanted to be I you. wanted to be. But yeah, now listen to me. Tell me about yourself. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so I really wanted to be an engineer, but I never got to be that. Yeah. When you are sharing your journey, how you moved from uh, the pamphlets to Botswana and all those things, it, your journey seems so smooth and well planned. Was it smooth? like for you from transitioning to one business to the other or the actual same businesses that you are doing, were they just smooth? No, 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 not at all, not at all. Um, so, from the pamphlets, I got to the village, invested in, um, you know, basic things that people need, you know, yeah. the, the carpenters, uh, the beans in very small sachets and whatnot. It was something very, very small. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the first challenge that I had then was just being able to stand as a young person, uh, one as one who is enterprising. And I remember um, one incident uh, when I wanted to contribute to the argument that was taking place, you know, among us, my peers. Mm -hmm. um, so, among us, the things we were selling was cassepa, and I like sharing this, was cassepa. So, there, there is sardine, carpenter, mm -hmm. and there is fish. So, cassepa is neither... <laughs> Uh, what is carpenter? In <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yeah. It is neither sardine, no, carpenter, nor is it fish. fish yeah. It is just there. Mm -hmm. And this thing is so bitter. So the poor at the village who would call the poor bosses, those poor ones, would then buy cassepa. How? A meda, a five uh, liter cable. packaging. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, if a five liter com uh, container, uh -huh. when uh, loaded with carpenter, sardine, uh -huh. would cost 30 kwacha then. But the same meda of cassepa uh, would be like seven kwacha. So it was very cheap. Yeah. So people used to make fun of it. So one time, um, I wanted to contribute to the conversation that was taking place. Mm -hmm. Then this guy just says, in Yanja, says, Iwe choka apa, kaziwe choku guri sa kasepa uko. Uh, direct translation, you get out of here, just continue selling cassepa. It was yeah. a demeaning sentence yeah. and everyone laughed. Uh, so that was one of the earliest challenges that I faced, where you have people making fun of you, your peers making fun of you, making fun of your hustle, making fun of what you're trying to do. That was really, 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 really painful. Um, but you see, that pain kept me going. It is one of the things that I then faced. I felt, ah, this guy laughing at me has nothing of their own. Mm -hmm. I have my little something which I'm pushing um, and this guy is out there laughing at me. Uh, so I learned at that point to say, I need not to look at what others think. I need to look at myself. So that was the first thing. The other thing is that little kiosk, after opening schools, got back to material boys, left that thing in the hands of family members. So you were going to the village when you... On holiday. On holiday, then... Back to, back school. to school. Where were you staying? So I was being kept at material okay. then. Okay. Yes, by my dad's friend. Okay. Yes. So at the village, opened this kiosk. Mm -hmm. After getting back to school, I left my stock in the hands of some family members. Unfortunately, they squandered that. Yeah. So it was not always, smooth. Always a story. So that's how yeah. I then moved to God's. Why? Because God's gave me the control. I would only go to buy God's 
when I am there. Mm -hmm. So it would be me engaging in that. So I felt the issue of putting into this kiosk thing wouldn't work because after holidays, it would be difficult to manage. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got into God's. In fact, even when I got on to importing things from Botswana and later on South Africa, in 2010, I was robbed in South Africa at Knife Point and they got all the money that I had. Um, in fact, the little money that survived uh, was in my inner pocket. Of course, you don't need to find out which inner pocket. Just know that there's a certain pocket. <laughs> now that you say the inner pocket, I'm interested. Which inner pocket? No, no, there's a pocket which was inner. <laughs> so, <laughs> so at least it yeah. was um, enough for my transport mm -hmm. back to Lusaka with oh, a little wow. change. Mm -hmm. So with that little change, I then decided to buy myself a suit as a reminder that I was once a businessman. So my journey in entrepreneurship has had its own ups and downs. Even How did you come back from that? All right, so interestingly, when I got back, it is the same year that I then formed the software company with oh, two okay. other friends. Mm -hmm. We didn't need to put in money because in that company, we were the three of us, so there was the software guy who was doing computer science at the University of Zambia. So he was developing his final year project. So his final year project was the same package that would help solve the challenges faced in schools. Mm -hmm. Then in the same team, there was one who was a teacher. So he had gone to the University of Zambia as a mature. Mm -hmm. So he was a practicing teacher. He had a diploma, so he had gone to get a degree. So this teacher knew the challenges faced in schools. So he was telling the software guy of the challenges faced in schools. So this guy was just developing this for his final year project. Yeah. Then myself, I understood business because I'd been involved in business. And I'd sold this software guy some suits at some point and whatnot. So I was the business guy. So we came together and formed this company. So that's how the transition then got to be. Nice. Now let's go to you making uh, your first million. Okay. Um, I'm trying to figure out when I got to make my first million. Um, was it a target that you had set, like uh, at this point I, I want to hit a million? No, no, not, not really, not really. I, 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 think, I think I was just enjoying, you know, you know, the comfortable life, you know, the life of, you know, being, being able to own yeah. um, what I dreamt of as a young person. And one of those things was the same transport business. The reason I got into transport business was because, you see, at the village, people that we looked up to mm -hmm. were, we lacked inspiration, I would say. We lacked inspiration to a very large extent. Mm -hmm. So people that we looked up to were those that were like truck drivers. Ah, oh, a person leaves the village, eh. goes to Lusaka, eh. and is a driver. <laughs> you know, in fact, even just a bus driver was a respected guy. Now, a, a truck, truck driver, driver. Yeah. at the village, yeah. 22 tires, because we even knew the number of tires, you know, <laughs> like that some of those trucks had 22 tires. Yeah. Ha! Huh. That one was a hero at the village. <laughs> Left the village. So, my take then was owning that, not just being the driver, but owning that mm -hmm. was a huge dream come true. Uh, so, I then decided to invest in trucks. So for me, it was not about being a millionaire or trying to be a billionaire, but it was just living my dream. Uh, our dreams were very simple and basic. Yeah. So for me, owning trucks was a huge dream come true. Yeah. Being able to fly in a plane. Yeah, but those are huge uh, dreams if you're, you look where you're starting from. That's oh, huge. Yeah, well, you can say so, but yeah, yeah it, was, it was quite interesting. It was, it was quite interesting. So for me, I wasn't really looking at you know, being a millionaire and whatnot. For me, just having that comfortable life, um, you know, a life that would afford you to eat beef or chicken whenever you decided to, ha, huh, what, what more do you want? Yeah, that's... <laughs> so, yeah, so I wasn't really looking at that. But um, by God's grace, I think one door leading to the other, I, I, I managed to make some good money, you know, by, by the time I was 24, 25, um, I, I, was, I was reasonably successful. I had my first house, um, um, my first property actually, mm -hmm. at 23. Actually, the property wow. that we have here, like where you are, yeah. now this was done at, you know, 22, turning 23 there about. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, so I became reasonably successful. Was, was I a millionaire? Yes. In terms of net worth, I was already um, 
So you were a millionaire before you were even 29, before Forbes recognized you when you were 29? All right, so the, the story of um, being recognized yeah. and um, people talking about it, it's mm -hmm. something that came in at a later time. And that came in at a later time mm -hmm. uh, by virtue of coming out in the open, you know, yeah. uh, being on social media and sharing on entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't care that I had no intentions of ever being a public figure or being one that would um, share on entrepreneurship or some as some might think you know being a speaker i had no intentions of doing that you just wanted I'm, to i just wanted to be myself do my thing live my life make my money and whatnot and i strongly believed that um, um, coins make a lot of noise notes don't make noise so i strongly believed that i don't need to make no in fact my thoughts were those that make noise don't have money. Those that talk about money don't yeah. have money. Yeah. So I was one of those that were in that school. So I had no intentions of being on social media. So when you say, you know, being recognized and people acknowledging you that you are successful at 29, it was because I then come out in the open. And there was some motivation that then led me to come out in the open. I had no intentions of being a public figure. Now you're telling me you were a millionaire, maybe you're 23, 24, 20, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking to myself, uh, that's the age when the young people, most of them are still experimenting with life. They still want to do a lot of things to just play around. Did you ever get that chance in your life? Like to just say, uh, I think let me date loose. Let me just be partying or do one or two things. Um, and unfortunately, Oh, do I say fortunately? Fortunately? Uh, no. Um, I think my, my faith played a part uh, to, uh, to that. Um, I am a um, Seventh-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. So um, I was an ardent member of the church. So I was a leader in the church. By virtue of being part of that organization, by virtue of being... Uh, a member of that church and a committed one for that matter mm -hmm. made me shun away from a couple of things like beer drinking and partying and all that stuff. So it was so unnatural to me. Uh, yeah, so that's how I escaped some of those things and some of those vices like smoking and you know. Never tempted? No, no, never, never. I've never drank before. I've never smoked before. Um, I've never um, uh, gone clubbing before, but I have entered a club. I yeah. entered once and it was um, New Year's Eve. I just wanted to know what really happened. What happens, yeah. Yes, so it was just going in just to see. And uh, I think that, sh that should have been 20, 2017, you know, thereabout. I just yeah. entered, it was for a, for a very short moment. It and wasn't for you, eh? And, and, well, it wasn't. I think I was just a spectator because I didn't even buy anything. I just walked in just to see yeah. how people are doing their countdown and whatnot. And then I stepped out. I, I, don't, I don't like noisy places. So, yeah. And you went on a day when everyone is out. No. When everyone is out. Yeah. And, and yeah. But, so, yeah. But, so that hasn't been part of my life. But that's good for you. So for now, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that you took us to your former school and you got to share with us, like not material boys, the primary school. Yeah. We visited this primary school and uh, let's just watch how it was. So I would call this the place where it all started. Oh yes, oh yes, so, yes. so this is uh, this is where I come from. Yeah? <laughs> so this is, you, you were telling me that this is the only block that was there at Ch Ch Chikwama, Chikwama Primary School. Uh, yes, Chikwama Primary School. So this yeah. was the only block. In fact, it was not even done because mm -hmm. there are no windows. Ah. Uh, and it was not plastered. Okay. So it was something very, very basic. So this is where it all began from. Okay. Yeah, so it was here where I did my grade. Uh, okay, so now I did my grade one. So there was a, there was a classroom block there. So just one, uh -huh. the classroom. Yeah. So it was a community school. Uh -huh. So it was just something very, very basic. So when it was handed over to the government, it began with this block. Okay. So it was incomplete. Okay. Yes. Were you once in this classroom? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So interestingly, yeah. When I was in grade five, um, I was in the last class. Uh -huh. Then the grade sevens were in this class. Okay. So I skipped from grade five because I used to talk the class, eh? Uh -huh. <laughs> so I skipped from grade five, skipped grade six, then go to grade seven. And okay. interestingly, even uh -huh. in grade seven, 
in a new class, new grade. You were topping the class. I was topping. <laughs> <laughs> it was all written that you were going to be stopping, uh, topping the class. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, can we, I think let's just go in and have ah, okay, a okay, uh, okay. classroom. Any memories? Like any vivid, vivid memories uh, that yeah, you may have? Um, yeah. The memories I have around this place were, there was, there was a certain girl uh -huh. um, uh, because I was pretty good in school, yeah, she used to hate me so much. She was the... She was your competitor. No, not even a competitor. So yeah. she was the monitor. Or, or uh, monitress, monitor. rather. Yeah. She hated me so much such that um, if, even when I'm absent, I would still appear on the noise list. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, no. Yeah. So when I'm written there, I'll be written uh, the sun times 10. <laughs> So very interesting memories, but yeah, they're yeah. all paid off. Yes, yes, yes. So it has been a very, a very interesting journey. How really. was it like then? You know, like living here, uh, schooling here. Uh, how was it? No, it was quite interesting. So, um, our learning here, we are learning in Nyanja, uh, you know, yeah. and that is something which is so interesting. So we used to learn in Nyanja. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, even English language itself, mm -hmm. like I've shared before, yeah. we used to learn it in Nyanja too, you know. Yeah. Uh, pandie pa topo, apa, uh, pandie pa yeah. Yeah. So it was quite interesting. Um, and thinking of making it, I, I, I don't know, it, it, was, it was quite difficult to fathom, mm -hmm. you know, your growth from here to become very, very powerful. Uh, because we had very few people to inspire us. We had very few people that we looked up to. Uh, the people that we looked up to uh, in this environment were those that maybe left the village yeah. and went to Lusaka and their bus drivers and conductors. Uh -huh. So those are the ones that would say, oh, no, but you are a truck driver. Yeah. No, those are the ones that we look up to. But uh, yeah, a very interesting journey. Okay, so I'm thinking, like, you, we, we've come here today and... Uh... What, what are some of the differences that you've noticed from the time you were here then and now? Yeah, so the major differences, I could have played the role as well. Mm -hmm. So at the, at the time I left, uh, or the time I was here, mm -hmm. so this was the only block, incomplete though. Yeah. Uh, so at 21, I then got to be chosen as the PTA chairperson. It was, I was the youngest and it was the first time ever that they chose someone of that age. Okay. Uh, so I contributed to the development, so I helped you know, set up this block. Mm -hmm. um, then I helped set up teacher houses, so we did three of those. Okay. Uh, so they kept want, want, wanting me to continue as the PTA chairperson, but you see, uh, so many com you know, competing needs. Yeah. So I couldn't continue you know, leading. Um, uh, but the major difference now is that we have uh, the workforce, um, we have more teachers, okay. uh, and things are flowing a lot better. Of course, so much more could be done. What would you like to see done more? Like, what is I, the one thing that you would like to see different? I think one thing that I really wish to see done here is to um, see the young ones believe that they can make it. So today, you know, I was distributing books, yeah. uh, just distributing my story and talking to the young ones of um, where I'm coming from. Kudela nenzo guri sapari kante mbapaja, but mu ana shop ya mene na manga, ah, ina na manga eja shopu, ndine, ah, kutati mupeze ko gura vintu. Na ene nenzo vuti kira chabe pa muzi, kuyembe la tumbuzi kwa timwe so chabe pa muzi paja, life yanu na imwe, it can change, mungankare very, very powerful. So I would want to encourage you. My grade nine, do the best that you can. Nizaku pasan mabuku yo berenga. Venice? Venice. You see, when, when I speak of where I'm coming from on social media or on interviews and whatnot, people would never get to understand. They would just think, ah, so, so where is he coming from? Uh, so yeah. how is it like? Is yeah. he really saying, uh, uh, saying the truth? Yeah. I think there are those persons. But these ones know where I come from. They know my parents. Yeah. They know. They know everything about me. So when people say to Musani, mm -hmm. they know. Are your parents still here? Yes, they're still here. Mm -hmm. They're still here. Just down that side. Okay. Not too far from here. It's out of a distance. Uh, so they know me very well. Uh -huh. uh, so for me, my wish is to encourage them. Let them dream and realize that they can make it. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they can become great. I think that is my wish. Great, and yeah. uh, we hope you keep supporting them and just see them grow to become. The, maybe we can see the next radical entrepreneur, the next doctor, you know. You see, I have no doubt. I have not, the fact that I was here, yeah. the fact that no one thought that I would become what I am today, mm -hmm. 
uh, is enough testimony that um, all these ones are potential radicals. Yes. So my wish is for them to realize that they have the power to become. Uh, and I'll do the best that I can. In fact, I was just talking to the deputy teacher and the head teacher that um, I want to be sponsoring every month, yeah. uh, every ten. Those that perform extremely well, I want to be giving them, you know, awards just to encourage them, them, just to yeah. motivate and, you know, keep pushing them for the best. Great. And to let them realize that when you put in your best, you apply yourself excellently, you get rewarded for such. Beautiful. And also just to find time to get down here and talk to these guys every now now and then. How so often do you frequent this place? Yes, I've been so busy of late, so it has been from the time I moved from being the, um, uh, the PTA person. Yeah. I haven't been uh, here in a while. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I'm so glad to be here. And thanks to you. Yes, <laughs> thanks for bringing you. I didn't know this part of, What do you call this part of Lusaka though? So this is... Um, Lusaka. I saw something like Lusaka South. Or so this is Lusaka West, uh, but Maken. Uh -huh. So the landmark places which are close to this place, we have, um, so there was Christian Voice. Okay. Yes, before they, they moved to Lusaka, they had, um, oh, in fact, they still have their transmitters nearby. So Christian Voice. Then down this road, you have uh, Nampundwe Mine. Ever heard of Nampundwe uh, yes, Mine? Yes, yes. Yes. So Nampundwe Mine is down this side. I think those are the key landmarks that we have. And interestingly, that road there uh, demarcates Kafue district and uh, Lusaka. Uh -huh. Yes, so yeah. And just nearby we have uh, Mumbwa. Uh, so they are not Mumbwa, there's uh, Ish. I, 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 yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, yes. I, yes my yes. first time being this part of Lusaka, so I'm actually happy that I do this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a, it's and it's beautiful. It's, oh, it's, really, it. it's got beautiful land, yes. Oh, yes. It's uh, arable land. You can do farming and yeah. whatnot. And that's why a number of people here um, are survived by farming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank, so, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. All right. <laughs> Welcome back. So that that is it your school I'm, I'm glad that we went there you accorded us a chance to be at your former school that's where everything started oh yes yes yes, yes. the journey began from there <laughs> okay so i hope you enjoyed the other conversation as well but now i have a few questions uh for me i'm thinking are you are you dating well that question <laughs> <laughs>